everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Angie, it's nice to have you guys here. It is time for July favorites because it is just about August. Oh, it will be August by the time this video goes up. That's, that's terrifying. Not gonna lie, that's, that's terrifying. But we're gonna focus on the positive and we're gonna focus on the good things and we're gonna focus on the things that I was absolutely loving this past month. I've got a lot of lifestyle favorites and then a handful of beauty and fashion favorites um, so we're just gonna dive right in. First fashion favorite, well the one fashion favorite, is actually an old favorite and that's this handbag. <laughs> I bought this last spring, something like that. If you go way, 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 way back in my videos, it was probably like last summer, I think it was like June sometime, I had a DSW handbag haul. I purchased a bunch of handbags from DSW. And this was one of them. And I did use this quite a bit off and on last summer, but this summer I've been using it almost every day. For summer school, I've been using a backpack and so I've just been using a handbag that I can wear crossbody which this works really great to keep my sunglasses my wallet and my cell phone that I can get in and out of and my keys so that when I get back to my car at you know 8 30 at night I'm not digging around in a giant backpack for those things but I've got everything right here so I can pay for my parking permit and just I just don't feel as safe when I'm digging around in a large bag for those things so having a small little bag like this but then for going to physical therapy or for going out to lunch on Sundays this bag has just been really really great so I've switched to other bags a couple times but for the most part this has been my main bag I also love it because it does look a little bit like the Chloe Drew bag, which I really love, but I can't afford. It's like over a thousand dollars and I just can't afford that at this moment. But as useful as this has been, I am thinking one day I might get a Chloe Drew bag because this, ba this bag has been really, really nice. It just fits everything really well. Sunglasses, wallet, my cell phone slides in, my keys fit in the top, and then I've also got things like lip gloss, hand cream, and my favorite Caudalie Beauty elixir spray, which is probably another favorite. I've been using this constantly this month because it's been so hot. Another thing I've been using to keep my skin a little bit more under control in this crazy weather is the Clear Skin Probiotic Moisturizer by Eminence Organic Skincare. I absolutely love this stuff. I love the way it smells and it feels really cool on the skin when I use it. So it just, my skincare routine in the morning and in the evening is just, it's so nice. Not just because of this, but because of everything I'm using. I am going to do an updated skincare routine video probably later in August. I've recently added two new products. So I want to keep trying them for another couple of weeks before I do an updated skincare routine. And then two other skincare favorites, it's actually kind of one general favorite and that is a new subscription service that I recently joined and that is uh, Face Mask Alchemy which is run by Marie from the channel and the color green and it is absolutely brilliant. So we've gotten two masks so far, Surfer Girl and Blue Sky. These are both amazing. I don't know that I could pick a favorite. I kind of think Blue Sky might be slightly edging out Surfer Girl, although I really do love Surfer Girl. I've only used this one once, but it just felt so cooling on my skin, which again, in this heat and the humidity, really need that. So, and I love the concept of the subscription service because it's, the price just dropped, so I think it's like 10 something a month and you get just enough product to last you for a month, so like this isn't full. So the idea is that you get enough product to do one mask every week for a month and then your next box and your next mask arrives. And to me that's just brilliant. It's a perfect idea and I like this because I don't switch up my general skincare routine. I'm really married that's the best word. I am married to my Eminence organic skincare products. And it's just about impossible to get me to switch off of that. But for masks, it's completely different. I use a bunch of different brands for my masks. And this has been wonderful because it's always a powder that you mix up. So I can mix in 
a lot of my eminence oils and serums and things like that and kind of get the best of both worlds so i have been loving this i love marie it's a fantastic idea and supporting youtube business love it so it's a win-win-win on all fronts and then some cosmetic favorites all kind of i area related and two of them are from sephora so the first one is the sephora brow builder and this one overall i love it the brush sucks the brush is kind of it's very messy i have to kind of always brush product off it's it's always too loaded up so if you just take it out and put it on it's going to make an absolute mess but the formula is great it covers up all of my blonde hairs. I think I need to get the next shade darker, especially once I get my hair done, touched up. I'm using it in Rich Chestnut. It's what is on my brows right now. This has kind of taken over for the Eyelore Brow Palette that I used to use because this is all in one step, whereas I used to have to use the gel and then the powder and then a clear gel to put everything in place. And so going from kind of a three-step process to one step so really liking this. I've been using it pretty consistently for the past three or four weeks and it still hasn't like run out or dried up which is sometimes a problem with this style and I think this was only $14 so loving that. It's been making things super easy. The other thing I've been loving is the V for Volume by Sephora Collection Mascara in... they don't want to say. It's the blue one. They only have one blue one. <laughs> But it's got a great wand, and it is, it is blue. I mean, it is blue on your lashes. In fluorescent light, you don't notice it as much. If you go back to the weekly vlog from the 4th of July, I'm wearing it on the 4th, and when I was putting it on in the bathroom, I didn't notice it as much, and then I came out here, and the light coming in from the side window, I just in the view in the little viewfinder on my camera, I was like, whoa, my lashes are really blue. So it's a really solid blue. So if you're looking for like an actual colored mascara and not just like a slight bluish tint, but like blue mascara, go for it. And I think this was also like $12 or $14, which is significantly cheaper than the YSL colored mascara that I bought last summer. So loving that. And then the final makeup favorite is the Naked Heat palette. I have been loving this and playing with this a lot. Um, so I don't want to blind you with the mirror. But the shades are just gorgeous. I did feature this in a Sephora haul not too terribly long ago. I want to say it was probably about two or three weeks ago. Probably closer to three weeks now. I've been playing with this a lot. I am wearing it today. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see very well. But I am wearing Chaser, which is the second one in, on the lid. And then I used Cayenne on the crease. And then I mixed Sauced, Sauced and low blow kind of over the middle part of the lid and just kind of blended everything together and then used a bit of ounce which is the lightest shade on the inner corner and kind of going slightly along the lash line in just a bit so again i'm not sure how well you'll be able to see but i like the way it turned out i haven't been playing too much with some of the darker colors. I've really been liking Lumber, which is a really pretty kind of, it shifts, so it goes from like a gold to like a peach. So I've been playing with that shimmer, and I've played with Ember, which goes on, which looks like a coppery shimmer, but it actually goes on pretty black, and it can make a pretty nice liner. So I've played with the darker shades a little bit as a liner, but overall I haven't been playing with the dark shades too much. You can create some really beautiful natural eye looks with lighter shades. But I think as we move into fall, I'm gonna play with the darker ones a bit more. I know they've really been billing this as like a summer palette and like warm summer shades and the whole like heat thing, but to me this palette just screams fall and fall weather and fall colors so I'm glad I picked it up when I did and I'm enjoying playing with it but I think this is going to become a super favorite once we're kind of moving into the fall winter season a bit so loving that moving on to my list because there were a lot of oh one more thing one more physical favorite is this candle 
First of all, I love the jar. The jar is just beautiful. I got this at Cost Plus World Market, and I think it's just a world market. Yeah, it looks like it's just a world market brand. Um, and this is the um, Onyx Amber and Dahlia. I wish you could smell this, but it is so good. And I'm definitely going to start going to Cost Plus for candles a bit more often. This was $14.99. I will say this doesn't kick off quite as much scent as the Bath and Body Works, but that kind of makes it perfect to burn at my desk. As you can see, it's also not burning down evenly the way that Bath and Body Works candles tend to do. I still absolutely love it, and I would love to find a perfume that smells like this, because I would wear that for sure. It actually reminds me of an old perfume that I used to have that they don't make anymore, so I'm like, oh, I need to find perfume with Amber and Dahlia in it, because it's so good. Okay. So moving on to um, some of the other lifestyle favorites, um, some shows and movies that I have been watching this month. First one is the new documentary that came out, um, I think it was aired on BBC or maybe it was ITV, I can't remember, that uh, Prince Harry and Prince William did. Uh, it's called Diana, Our Mother. It was really good and it was nice. As someone who studies Princess Diana, and has done a lot of research on her because she's one of my research subjects for my dissertation. I've watched a lot of documentaries and some of them are very sensationalized and very gossipy and tabloid-esque. <sighs> Just a lot of speculation and conjecture and things that it's like there's no way that you can possibly know that. So it was nice to see a documentary that her son's were involved in to learn more about her from their perspective because I feel like you got a much clearer idea of who she actually was and so I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very very well done. Another documentary, it's a new Netflix documentary series called Daughters of Destiny. It is so fascinating and so well done. It's about a school in India that helps the most I impoverished kids um, and families in the lowest caste of India's society kind of get out of that and be educated and be given a chance to go to college, go to university, and the, the school that they are raised in, they go to live in this school, they're raised here from a pretty young age, like I think they start at like age four or five, or maybe at six, but they're, they're little, and they only get to go home like twice a year to see their families, and then they are sponsored throughout university, so the school pays for the college kids to go to school and to get their degrees um, and it's just amazing to see how the school is developed and in the documentary you see some of the kids graduate from the school and go on to university and kind of make that adjustment and you know as someone who believes in the power of education it's always fascinating fascinating for me to see how education works in other parts of the world and how education really can be the difference between continuing a cycle of poverty or breaking that cycle. The documentary is four episodes. You really get a good sense of the history of the school and how it runs and then also really see the journey that some of these kids make. So I highly recommend that. It is a Netflix original series so if it's not currently on your Netflix like in Canada or the UK I would imagine it will be soon because they tend to put their stuff up on all their regions, not just one. Um, just sometimes the release dates take longer than others. And then on a completely different side of things, a reality show, I've been loving The Bachelorette this season. It's been really interesting to see the dynamics play out with the first African-American Bachelorette. The first African-American to have the lead in either The Bachelorette or The Bachelor. Rachel Lindsay is The Bachelorette. I loved her on the last season of The Bachelor. I thought she was one of the best women on that show. So I was really thrilled when they announced that she was going to be The Bachelorette. And I have been loving watching this season and loving that they aren't shying away from talking about race and perception and kind of the double standards and the struggles that she is having 
as a black woman in that position. And I thought, I think she's been doing brilliant and I've just been loving it. So we're almost to the end and I'm gonna be really sad to see this season end. I really hope she picks the right guy. The last episode ended on kind of a cliffhanger, as they always do. Um, and I don't want to say too much in case people are still catching up, but I'm really, really loving it. And then two films, just to wrap things up. One is Sweet Francais. Um, it's a, an English film. It's a BBC Films production, and it's got Kristen Scott Thomas, Michelle Williams, which is interesting because I, even though I never watched Dawson's Creek, I can't stop thinking of her from Dawson's Creek, and Ruth Wilson, who I absolutely love. It's similar to a book that I mentioned recently. It's not the same story. It's different characters in a different story, but it's set in France during the Nazi occupation, and it's about a family that has a Nazi officer living living in his home, in their home. It's a really interesting story. That's on Netflix here in the US, so it might be on other Netflix. Definitely check it out. Really, really good and very well done. And then a final film, which is also on Netflix, um, it just came to Netflix this month, is the film Lion with Dev Patel and Nicole Kidman, and it's about a little boy who gets lost in India and eventually adopted to a family in Australia and then tries to go home and find his family. And it's based on a true story, so now I want to read that book too. But it was really good. The film is really, really well done. Definitely make sure you watch into the credits because they kind of catch you up on kind of the real side of things, which I love when films do that. I just love when it's based on the true story. I like when you get to see the real people that the actors have been playing. So I was really glad that they did that. It's a really, really great film. I was bummed that I didn't get to see it when it was in the theaters because um, a lot of people were raving about it in the theaters. You will cry. If you have a heart, you will cry. <laughs> it's definitely an emotional film, but emotional in a good way. So definitely watch that. If you do, let me know what you think. And yeah, those are my July favorites. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know what some of your monthly favorites were, or just say hi down in the comments because I always love talking to you guys. Subscribe if you are not subscribed, and yeah, I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.